Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Deck, and today what we're going over is how to safely set up your oxyacetylene torch, light it, and shut down. So that means what we're going to be doing is connecting these regulators, connecting the hoses, we're going to be leak checking them, then after that we're going to be adjusting the pressures on both regulators, then we're going to go and light the torch, and we're going to adjust the flame properly, then we're going to shut the system down. So for safety, you want to have an ABC fire extinguisher, so... ABC will take care of any type of flame, so you, you always have that around before lighting a torch. I usually have a, a, a bucket like this, or smaller, uh, with a wet rag in there, and then just a uh, water spray bottle. For leak detection, we're going to be using our Micron bubble leak detector, and then we want to have our, our shaded uh, safety glasses right here for when we light the torch. You're going to need two sets of adjustable wrenches and your sparker. This right here you can use to uh, open up the acetylene tank right here. This is an MC tank. It's a 10 cubic foot tank. Or you can use your ratcheting service wrench. We're going to use our gloves for safety for the heat. Also, some of these acetylene tanks have a handle instead of the, the key on the back. So you may not need this wrench or the ratcheting service wrench. As you can see right here with our oxygen tank, we have a handle up top there. And this is a... Uh, our tank and it's a 20 cubic foot oxygen tank. For this we're going to be using a uniweld setup with a number two tip. We could also use something different such as a cap and hook and this one happens to have five flames and it will project the heat in one direction and towards the center of the hook in order to keep the heat off of an, a sensitive object such as a TXV or service valve. But in this video we're going to be using the number two tip. So this is your acetylene tank and you're going to have one adjustable wrench on the neck of the tank and then you're going to have the other one on the acetylene regulator nut. You're going to turn that clockwise because this is a right hand thread until it's snug. And then we're going to tighten the hose. So this hose is actually a left hand thread on both sides. This side and where it attaches into the handle at. And then we're going to put our 6 inch adjustable wrenches on here. And we're going to snug this up. This is a left hand thread. You want to make sure to not over tighten this. It's very easy to over tighten it and then that connection is no good anymore. This nut will end up expanding where the threads will get cut off and it's no good. So just snug and that's it. Now we're going to tighten the regulator up to the oxygen tank. So you're going to need to put a wrench on and it's going to be a little awkward the way that you're going to need to put it on there. And we're going to tighten this up. It's not going to be quite lined up with your adjustable wrenches. And... You're going to go ahead and snug that down. This right here is a right hand thread. So basically you have right hand thread, right hand thread, right hand thread, and then this is the only left hand thread on the hose. We'll take our small adjustable wrenches. And you're just going to snug that up. Make sure to not over tighten these again because it'll be easy to strip this off. Now in reference to the handle, you're just going to hold it snug like this and just tighten it. This is your right hand thread and then this is your left hand thread. Make sure to not over tighten these as well. So in reference to the handle assembly with the hoses, this says oxygen and that's why you have your green hose attached and this says fuel and then you have your, your red hose attached. In reference to the handle, there's a rubber grommet on the inside, and then there is a rubber o-ring on the inside of here. So as this tightens on, you tighten it clockwise, and it has it, that extra seal there. Now, just so you know, I don't have it facing back like this. I usually have it faced just like this, so that when I'm adjusting the handles, I can see my flame very well. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up with my 6 inch adjustable wrench. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bubble leak detector on each of the joints. So right back here. I will also tell you that you want to have it on this packing nut where this key valve is. I've had that leak many a times. You know, uh, just uh, when I get a tank for the, for the first time and I go ahead and open it up. Sometimes I get bubbles on here so it's very important to check that. If you use your hoses a lot and they, they tend to maybe start cracking here, it's time to get another set. So you could also check right here. This is a non-corrosive bubble leak detector, uh, but when you have new hoses, you shouldn't have any leaks right there. It would just be at that connection. 
Then we're going to come over to the oxygen. We want to make sure that we don't have any big leaks over here. Before we turn these handles on right here and right here, we want to make sure that these regulators are backed out. So you're going to turn this until you feel it snug, start to snug up a little bit, and then you're just going to turn it back a little bit. So same thing with this. You're going to have this backed up. And what that'll do is that'll make sure that no pressure goes into this secondary regulator, uh, which would come to the hoses. So first things first, we're just going to open the tanks up and we'll read our pressure for the tank right here and our pressure for the acetylene tank right here. So now to open our acetylene tank, what we could do is we could use either our small key or our ratcheting service wrench. We're going to use our ratcheting service wrench. And this right now is front seated clockwise all the way down. So in order to open it, we're going to have to turn it left hand or counterclockwise. So we're going to do that one quarter of a turn and that's all. So you don't need to, to open it up too, too much. And the reason for that is if there's an emergency, it doesn't take very long to close this tank down. So now you see that we're reading just under half of a full tank. Also, when you open your oxygen tank up, you can open that handle up. That's okay. It's just the acetylene tank is the one that you want to just crack open. Now, before we turn our regulators in here and here, in order to allow the gas to come in to the secondary regulators, what we're going to do is we're going to put bubble leak detector right where the connections of the hoses are to the handle. So we're getting ready to allow our gas to come through. We're going to start with our acetylene right here. So what you want to do is you're going to open this up first, and then we're going to tighten this in. What we're looking for is 5 PSI. So this handle has to be open because the flow, as you'll see, so right now we're at about 5 right there. Once we shut this handle off, it's actually going to go higher. So the flow will be less than what uh, the, the gauge will be set at. But when it's open, it's going to run at about 5. So when we shut this down, now that's when we want to leak leak check. So look all around on your connections right here as well as here. For your oxygen, we're going to go ahead and open this handle up. And this right here, you're going to turn in until we get to 10. So there we go. And as we close this, it actually went up to about 12. So right now you want to leak check, give it about a minute, two minutes, check to see if you see any bubbles. I'm going to go ahead and hit these again with some bubble leak detector, and then we'll be safe. And now we're going to wait two minutes to check for bubbles. After the two minutes is over and you don't see any bubbles, you can go ahead and wipe these down. You want to make sure that you're not using dish detergent and water, but you want to use non-corrosive bubble leak detector. And the reason is because the chemicals in the, in the dish detergent nowadays are a lot more corrosive than they used to be. And so you don't want that to eat away at your hose or your brass right here. So it's safest to just use your bubble leak detector, the same stuff you'd use on your refrigerant lines. Next, we're going to get our striker out, get that ready. As well, you want to go ahead and put your, your gloves on and your shield. Make sure you're wearing approved welding glasses uh, that are properly shaded, not just sunglasses. So make sure you're aware of where you point your tip at, especially not towards your, your hoses, such as these, because then you'd have a, a very, very a dangerous situation. And also remember that the heat comes out a far distance as well with this, so you could accidentally melt something that you're not meaning to. So now we're going to go ahead and turn this on. So right here, this is the kind of flame that you want. If you can see inside of this, there is three flames. So there's the large flame, the inner flame, and then even the one inside of that. So the one inside of that is the hottest. So you're going to be brazing with the, the second one. If you opened up the oxygen more, you're going to hear more of a hissing noise, and that's an oxidizing flame. So you don't want that. If you, you get it to the point where you don't have your third flame in the middle, that will be considered a neutral flame. So anything from there to a reducing flame, the reducing flame is better because you have better control and, and you can put your, your 
uh, tip as close as you need to for your copper in order to melt it. So you can back it up, you can bring it in, and it also wrap around the copper very well. All right, so now that we have this lit, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slowly, slowly turn my acetylene, and that will avoid making a large noise. So that's it. So then you go ahead and shut your, your handles down. Then we'll shut our oxygen tank. And also our acetylene. You want to let your pressure out of your regulators. So we're just going to go ahead and do one at a time. And that's it. So make sure that these are shut after you're done. And for extra precaution, in case you accidentally open the tanks up, you could back these up as well. If you're looking for this oxyacetylene setup by Uniweld, I have that link down in the description section below, as well as this number two tip and also the captain hook tip. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And if you want to see another HVACR training video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Silver Tech Channel.